Welcome back to our Walk in the Word. Turn with me in your Bibles again to Philippians at chapter 2. This time we will look at verses 19 through verse number 30. Philippians at chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, and companion in labor, and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness, because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. In this paragraph, Paul is still discussing the submissive mind. He has given us a description of the submissive mind in the example of Jesus Christ. He has explained the dynamics of the submissive mind in his own experience. Now he introduces two of his helpers, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Let's look first of all at Timothy. In verses 19 through 24, Paul talks to us about his fellow servant, Timothy. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Paul probably met Timothy on his first missionary journey, at which time, perhaps, the youth was converted. Apparently, Timothy's mother and grandmother, Lois and Eunice, were converts. And while on his second missionary journey, Paul enlisted young Timothy as one of his fellow laborers to replace young John Mark, whom Paul refused to take along on the journey because he had previously abandoned the cause. John Mark is now with Barnabas, and Timothy is now a laborer with Paul. Timothy had to develop and cultivate the mind of Christ. Notice the characteristics of this young man in these verses. He has a servant's heart. Timothy naturally cared for people and was concerned about their needs. You're never going to be able to reach people for Christ until they know that you love them. Not only did he have a servant's heart, but he had a servant's training. Paul didn't add Timothy to his evangelistic team the same day Timothy was saved. He left him behind in Derby and in Lystra, and it was in that fellowship that Timothy grew in spiritual matters and learned how to serve the Lord. You cannot make a person who is a novice become well-oiled as it relates to Christian service. He needs experience. He needs training. He needs teaching. He needs to be under somebody in authority. You will never be ready to be in authority 
until you have first been under authority. Experience without teaching can lead to discouragement and teaching without experience can lead to spiritual deadness. You must both have experience and be under somebody's teaching. Let's look now at Epaphroditus in verses 25 through verse 30. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Epaphroditus was a Gentile member of the Philippian church who risked his health and his life to carry their missionary offering to the Apostle Paul when he was in Rome. The name Epaphroditus means charming, and what a charming Christian he was. In verse 25, he was a balanced Christian. I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Balance is very important in the Christian life. You can't be all fellowship. You can't be all singing. You can't be all prayer. It must be a balance of all of those things to make one a whole Christian. Not only was Epaphroditus a balanced Christian, but he was burdened for the work of the kingdom. Unless God puts a burden on you for the loss or a burden on you to minister to those who are suffering or estranged from the faith, if you're not burdened about it, if it's not a heaviness on your heart and on your life, you will never give it your 100%. But not only was Epaphroditus balanced and burdened, because of his balance and his burden, the scripture says he was blessed. He was sick unto death. He almost died ministering in the faith. But God blessed him and God gave him great joy. And not only was he a joy uh, to the believers, but he was a joy to Paul because what they could not do Epaphroditus made up for it. They were not able to bring Paul an offering. They were not able to go, but they were able to send. And because they sent their gift by Epaphroditus, not only were they blessed, but Epaphroditus was blessed as well. If you want to be blessed in the Christian life, be balanced, be burdened, and watch God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Walk in the Word. Look forward to seeing you again next time.